What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics. Today, we are going to talk about a little something I'd like to call the next shoe to drop. This was something uh, Dakota touched on on a video last week, Sports Cards Anonymous, hashtag retired, but still post a lot of videos. And we also talked about it on the Friday night live stream with myself, Dakota Filmington. And I don't think Bobbles was on yet for this part of the discussion, but I could be wrong. And that's, I, I really think we are going to see, you know, this was basically a 2023 prediction, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit more. So I'm just splitting it out in its own video. Specifically, Panini Wax, I think, is in for a big price correction in 2023. There's like this misalignment. When you look at the prices of baseball wax, and listen, <clears throat> Tops has had some dumpster fires this year. The whole Tops Chrome debacle, uh, Tops Chrome update looks like it has massive QC issues. But on the flip side of that, Tops Update Paper has been a tremendous success. Tops Holiday, super fun rip, good quality control, cool looking cards. Uh, Tops Heritage, nice, cheap, fun rip. So there's a little bit on both sides. But even that, the pricing is very realistic. For example, people lost their minds about Topps Chrome Sapphire being 250 a box with a 600 card checklist and 30 some cards in a box. Like that was ridiculously out of sorts. On the Panini side of things, we see that all the time, but they're thousand dollar boxes, $1,200 boxes, $1,500 boxes. To Dakota's point in the video that he did last week about, hey, I just want a reasonably priced football box to open like sub hundred dollars that's not retail it really doesn't exist outside of maybe score and who the heck wants to rip score whereas on the baseball side of things you could get a tops update hobby box paper for a little over 100 bucks and that's an, an exceptionally good rip you can get a tops heritage high number box for their 80 bucks on tops's website i have it pulled up here you can find them online for about 70 on ebay uh, depending, maybe some some other various prices at, at some of the other big retailers. But they're in that like $70 to $80 price range, and they're a perfectly reasonable rip at that price. You're probably not going to hit an auto, but you have a decent chance of hitting like some rookie short prints and things like that. And, you know, Top Scrum Update, that's going to come in, it looks like, between I'm seeing anywhere from $130 to $160 a box. We really don't have a good settling price on that yet on the Topps Chrome update. Now, we don't know what the quality control is going to be like yet. Topps Chrome update mega boxes. The QC is a disaster. We'll see if the hobby boxes are any better. I doubt it, uh, but we'll see if we get lucky on that. But outside QC, the checklist is really solid. And once again, the price point at 120, 130, 140 bucks, whatever it ends up being, is not the worst thing in the world. If Topps Chrome update hobby was a panini product that would be like an eight or nine hundred dollar box the way that they charge for things maybe they throw a guaranteed auto in and this doesn't have that but they would charge a massive premium for some scrub autograph so there just seems to be this imbalance on the pricing tiers of the two different companies whereas prism or i'm sorry panini specifically is still pricing things like we're in the boom and tops on the hobby boxes, things never really got out of control. Now, maybe you could say that's a more indicative of the baseball market versus the basketball and football market. And you can absolutely be correct on that. But something I'm starting to notice, we've already seen it on the retail side of things. Retail is sitting. People are not having it with these $30 blaster boxes, almost $60 mega boxes for the retail junk that Panini has been putting out. The other thing that I'm starting to notice, and I don't, I'd be very curious for your thoughts and comments on this because I don't follow a ton of stuff in the breaking scene. And I know some of you do. I'm seeing a lot more noise on social about people heavily marketing, hey, we still have four spots left in this break. Would really like to run it tonight. Come jump in. And then, like, it's that for, like, three nights in a row. 
and maybe it's just my sample size. So I'm kind of casting a net to see if uh, any of you that kind of go in and out of the breaking scene, or maybe you buy in the breaks are noticing, or maybe you're a breaker yourself. Are you noticing things start to cool down a little bit? Because if that starts to happen, then you're really going to see hobby prices start to come down. I just don't think the demand there is enough to support these super high hobby box prices. Another thing that's going against them, and this is very micro, I think this was going to happen no matter what, where the Panini prices for hobby boxes seem ridiculously out of line. This upcoming football class blows. Like, let's just call it as it is. There's no real chase. There really isn't. Uh, it's a very much a defensive and offensive lineman draft. Once again, this is something we kind of talked about during the live stream. There's not even really great skill position players to chase as a secondary, and the quarterback class is meh at best. So now, how are you going to justify charging a thousand dollars for a box of football prism hobby, even seven or eight hundred, even six hundred? That should be like a two hundred dollar box, like it used to be. Quite frankly, it should probably be like a hundred dollar box with this class. How are breakers going to move that product? And you know they're going to get stuck with it. Anyone that's on allocation, they're going to be like, hey, man, if you want all the other good stuff, if you want Victor Wambanyana wax for 2023 basketball, uh, you need to eat this pallet loads of prism football, have fun chasing Kenny Pickett and going crazy. So just something feels out of whack there. And like I said, we are seeing retail wax piling up on shelves. I, I did a little retail hunting late last week just to try to find. I, I, what I was really looking for was uh, Topps Chrome Update hangers uh, because that's a thing this year. I just kind of wanted to get my hands on them and kind of feel them out a little bit. So I stopped at a couple different targets and there was just piles of Optic Select and Prism cello packs specifically and also some blasters i mean just piles of this stuff no tops update to be found no tops chrome update to be found once again very good products very good checklist paper tops update quality control is pretty good chrome eh, not so much but it's the shiny new toy and i just don't see how panini can continue to justify these prices because I frankly don't think the secondary market is going to be there to support it. And I think this is going to be the year. 2023 is going to be the year where we see significant price corrections on Panini Wax specifically. Maybe we even see a retail discount back to the old pricing at $20 Megas, $40 Blast. I'm sorry. $40 Megas, $20 Blasters, $10 Cellos, instead of $15, $30, and $50 to $60, depending on the product right now. Because that stuff's just sitting. It's not getting gobbled up. And you have a weak class coming up. This basketball class, this upcoming basketball class, like the one that's in the NBA right now, Paolo Bancaro is great. Don't get me wrong. Chet's hurt. And Jabari Smith is a perfectly fine NBA player. But he's not going to be someone that everyone's chasing. And then beyond that, no one's really broken out yet. So other than Palo, you don't have a huge chase in this coming NBA product. People don't like last year's class for some reason, and that class has way more talent to chase than this year's does. Back that up with a bad football class, and you're going to have two weak releases in a row trying to support these ridiculously high prices for sealed wax coming out of Panini's warehouses. Now, there's light at the end of the tunnel because Victor the Frenchman is coming and everyone is going to lose their mind for that guy. Uh, he does look really good, all things being equal. I've watched some of him, no NBA scout here or anything like that. But the hype train is going to go off the rails for him, especially after what a lot of people are going to view as a down class this year. They will use him to pump up the whole NBA wax market heading into 2023 buying season but this just feels like price correction year specifically on panini wax 100 bucks for a tops hobby box that feels perfectly fine you know series one series two whatever bowman chrome at what was it 260 a box feels a little high um first edition bowman draft felt really high it's not a product i really know a ton about but that just seemed ridiculously expensive 
And just the fact that people were losing their mind at Topps Chrome Sapphire at 250, which did seem a little high, but the fact that you, you compare that release to a lot of Panini releases, I would much rather have Topps Chrome Sapphire at 250 than most of the stuff coming out of Panini right now at 4X the price in some cases, or even 2X the price. So, once again, curious for your thoughts and comments down below, specifically on the breaking side of things. Like I said, I don't follow the breaking scene a lot. I've just been noticing a lot more retweets, specifically on Twitter, from some of the larger accounts that I do follow, like heavily advertising breaks that don't seem to be filling as quickly as they used to. Once again, I could be wrong on that one. That's why I'm looking for your feedback on that aspect of it. That's all I have for you guys and girls today. We will catch you on the next one. Peace.